I should say, uh, we do our demo movie files at a fairly low resolution screen of 600 by 800. The program can work at 600 by 800 and can work at much higher resolutions. The reason we do such low resolutions is it keeps the size, the memory size of the movie file small, so it's easy to download and easy to move around on different computers and such. Like we said in our previous movie, you click on Flowbench Specs, you got some different types of electronics that you can use to automate a lot of the data recording, which really helps accuracy and, and really speeds up the test. You can see here we got Superflow Flowcom and our Performance Trends black box. So what do these things look like? Okay, here we have a Superflow Flowcom. This is the earlier Flowcom. It was around till about 2006, 2007, I believe. And you can see it's tan in color. And this one had serial ports, COM ports, 910 COM ports on it. And it had three pressure traps for your test pressure, your incline manometer, your flow pressure, and a pitot tube if you wanted it, a couple temperature inputs, and a swirl meter input, I believe it's J3 here, and your, um, your communications cable to your computer. In about 2007 or so, Superflow came out with the black, the USB flow comp. Same three pressure taps, some temperature inputs, flow meter inputs. The big difference is it's got a USB port here, so you talk USB. And then we have our black box, which is real similar. Three pressure taps, a couple temperature inputs, swirl meter inputs, and um, this is ours. The difference between ours and theirs is ours is quite a bit cheaper, but theirs does have this display. Their Superflow Flowcom can work uh, without a computer, and you could get CFM measurements up here. With ours, you do need the computer connected to it to make it work. With our, super, or with our black box, uh, it will come with a, a US, or I'm sorry, a serial cable like this. Female ends on both ends, like we have attached here. Sometimes on newer computers, on newer computers that need USB adapters, we have them here. But here's a, an example of one, and. It should come with a CD because you may need a driver. This is not just wires in here. There's actually a little chip in here and such that you may have to install a software driver. But the important thing is this goes into a USB port. This will connect to this cable. This is the important thing, though. You need the cable that came with this with your system for it to work. You cannot just plug this directly in, let's say, with a gender changer because this is what's called a null modem cable. Pin 2 on this end connects to pin 3 on this end and vice versa. Because pins 2 and 3 swap, and if you want to ohm out the cable to see what it is, you can read right here, you can read the little numbers with a magnifying glass. See if it's got a null modem cable. Because for us to work, and I believe Flowcom's also to work, the, the uh, ones that have serial ports, these 9 pin ports on them, they need null modem cables. So. Uh, make sure you got a null modem cable in your in your system. Now, if we go ahead and say we got some electronics here, we change it from none to performance trends black box. We can click on this find COM port button, and it will check COM ports one to fifteen to see uh, if it can find a black box on it, and you can see it did. Ours is connected to COM port 1. If it didn't work out that easy, and this will also work if you said you had one of the Superflow flow comps, it will automatically look on COM ports 1 through 15 to see if it can find what looks like to be a Superflow flow comp. So that makes it nice and easy for you, but sometimes it doesn't work so easy, even with Superflows and ours, the USBs and such. Um, and that's another thing. A USB flow com from Superflow will look like a COM port to the computer. So don't look for USB ports if you go in the control panel. It will show up as a COM port. So what do you do if it doesn't show up so easily here? Well, one thing you can do is you can back out of this screen, and you can click on Help at the top of the main screen. Down at the bottom here, Test COM ports. Little screen pops up. 
showing you how to connect with a paper clip between pin two and three on the end of your COM port cable. And as you can see here, it tells you to put this paper clip in. And you can see here, that's exactly what we've done. We've connected port two and three on the black box two end of this cable, not over at the computer. On this end, you disconnect it from there and put that paper clip in there. And then what you do is you just click on test COM port. And you can see we sent the alphabet and we see back the alphabet. The COM port is talking correctly. What that is telling us is the computer's COM port is working. It, there could other be, still be problems. For example, um, if you had a straight through cable, not a null modem cable, connecting two and three would effectively be the same thing. It's not the same to the black box. So all we're checking here is that the computer's COM port is working. If you didn't think it was on COM port one, you try COM port two, and you get something like this. It's looking, it's looking, it's trying to see if the alphabet comes back. And it said, I sent that, but received nothing back. If you cannot pass this test, there is a problem with the computer or the cable. So you've got to be able to pass this type of test before you can have any hope of, uh, of the port flow being able to read your data logger. But let's say you got our black box, two, and you pass that test, but it's still not communicating. Here's the next check, test to check. And because we're just starting, it says we don't have any calibration data, but that's fine. I'm just going to show you this. You click on help in the electronic screen. Test COM ports is the thing we already did, just another way to get at that screen. But here's another one, check boot message. And it tells you little instructions to do. Basically, you turn off the power to the black box, make sure the cable is hooked up, and everything's powered up and connected. And it's assuming, because you said in the other screen that you're connected to COM1, that you have everything working. And what you're going to do is you got the black box powered down. You're going to click on Yes. And then, within 10 seconds, power back the black box. So basically, click on Yes, power up the black box, and just wait. And we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to click on Yes. I'll show you here what I'm going to do. Just power it up. And you got a boot message here. There's DAS2, copyright. You got something that makes some sense. If you got nothing, the uh, program would tell you you got nothing. But this is the next step up in trying to troubleshoot bad communications. So we passed that test also because obviously it's all working here. Okay, and then after that test, it sends a signal out. The first check is when the black box powers up, it just automatically sends a signal. So the first thing it told us is it received a signal, received information from the black box. Then what happens is the program sends out a command to the black box, and like this said, the black box seemed to be responding to the simple command. So it looks like we got communications going both ways, which is good. And if we had any kind of calibration data in, the next check would be you would see these numbers changing a little bit, which we'll show you in a little bit once we get things calibrated. Now, let's say you're still having trouble getting going here. I'm going to show you something by clicking on Start. Now, this has nothing to do with the Port Flow Analyzer. This is all Windows. But you click on Start. Sometimes you got to click on Settings first. There might be Settings shown here and then Control Panel. But you go to Control Panel. And you look for system. Double click on system, hardware. Now, this is XP. Vista might be a little different, or it is, unfortunately. Device manager. You want to get to this screen for device manager. And here's what you're looking for ports, common LPT. And you can see here is a communications port, the one we're using. And it says communications port COM1. Then you got your printer port. And this is what, if you got a USB adapter, how it'll look here. It'll say something probably about being a USB serial port through an adapter. And it will have a COM number. 
and it will act just like a normal COM port, even though it's USB. If we were using this one, we would have checked out COM4. If we wouldn't have had this one here, this COM1, if we had USB, we may only have COM4 or COM12. The number's really not that important, unless for some reason it's over 15. 16 on up, we cannot use, and it's very unlikely you'll ever see anything above that, but on some of you computer geeks that are always doing things with the computers, it's possible you can get com, com ports above the number 1515. But this is where you look to see if everything's working. If you see a yellow exclamation mark here, it means it's not working. You might have to reinstall your driver. Um, the straight com ports like here, everything works fine. But I double clicked on that to show you things here like the driver. Sometimes you actually have to uninstall the driver on these USB ports and, and install them again. Port settings, this is where you'd go in and you could say COM port 4. No, I don't want to use COM port 4. I want to assign it COM port 6 or something. You can see I've actually used up the COM ports 24 on my computer because I do a lot of this kind of stuff. So anyway, but this is where you'll get into some of this other stuff. Um, roll back a driver, update a driver, uninstall. If you have a USB serial port adapter that's not working, this is something you would have to get into through the device manager up here, through your system properties in control panel. 